You've just bought that Instant Painting Expert in a Box course or workshop, and tomorrow you fully expect to be creating your first masterpiece. Well, I have bad news for you. That instant gratification pill is still in the far-flung future of George Jetson, if at all. I think the problem is we expect too much too soon. I think of it like a puzzle. Recently, my family and I, we put together this big jigsaw puzzle, had over 500 pieces. And when we took it out of the box and dumped it on the table, it was just a big jumbled mess. Now, the problem is, you know, if we wanted that puzzle to be instantly put together, it wouldn't be any fun. But instead, we wanted to go through the process of organizing those pieces and begin putting together. Learning how to do that was fun. And I think that's the way it is, or should be, with painting. Uh, it should be fun, but it is a process that takes time. The reality is, it takes time and lots of practice to learn and master the skills of painting. In many respects, it's also like riding a bicycle. I remember as a five-year-old, I wanted to learn how to ride this big blue rusty bicycle that we had. Now it had the white handlebars, a rusty chrome steering wheel, had the streamers coming out the end, but I didn't know how to ride this thing. It did have training wheels though, and you might think of training wheels like instant gratification. Sure, you could get on the bike, the bike would stand kind of wobbly vertically, and you could in a sense ride the bike, but it wasn't really a lot of fun. And the reality is the training wheels, what it would do is they acted like giant levers. And so if you made any turn whatsoever, that lever just flung you over. <laughs> it was no fun. You would get hurt in the process. So instant gratification on a bike just wasn't meant to be. So what I would do is I'd get on that bike, get on top of a hill that was in our backyard and get on it and coast down that hill. Uh, the pedals would turn so fast, I, 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 could, I, I couldn't keep my feet on it. And uh, you'd get on the bike and then you realize, okay, I've got on the bike and I'm going down a hill. How do I stop this thing? So all these pieces, you know, how do I steer? How do I balance? How do I stop it? How do I make it go? It, it was overwhelming to my little five-year-old mind and body. And many times I fell off and crashed and got skint and beat up. But man, was I having fun. I was learning how to ride that bicycle. And finally, all the pieces slowly came together. It took time. It took practice and persistence. But finally, I could ride that bike without thinking about balance, braking, or steering. That little five-year-old boy poised on the top of that huge, scary hill on a rusty blue bicycle that is where I am today in the process of learning how to paint. It's also like a puzzle, uh, to mix my metaphors a bit here. Uh, you know, th this puzzle here has over 500 pieces, all interlocking. And that's the way the knowledge and skill and craft of painting is. You got all these pieces that have to come together in order to create a good painting. And it takes time. But it, it was a hard lesson for me to learn. Years ago, my wife, as an anniversary gift, she gave me a set of paints, brushes, a canvas, an easel, and I set out to do my very first painting. And I was happy, I was excited to get to do this painting. But this is the results. This is my very first painting. I'm embarrassed to show it, but I'm gonna show it anyway. It is awful, it's horrendous. I wanted to throw it away. I was disgusted with myself. Now, I'm glad in retrospect that my wife kept the painting. In fact, she put it in a frame. And today I have it as a measure of where I've come in the learning process. But I didn't give up. I was discouraged, but I didn't give up. So I did another. But this time I bought a book by, from Bob Ross, of all people. And uh, it was called The Joy of Painting. And I also watched some of the videos on PBS. So you might say that was my first online course. And this painting is the result. Oh, my goodness. It's terrible, too. Where's the atmospheric perspective? Where's the realism? It's so naive. It's flat. It's unreal. 
What I wanted to do was a painting like you would see in the museums. Thomas Moran, Albert Beardstadt, Tom, Thomas Cole. But this is nothing like it. If anything, this didn't even come close to resembling a Bob Ross painting. It was a poor imitation. There was no happy accident here. Just one huge letdown. Anything we don't like, you will turn it into a happy little tree or something. Because as you know, we don't make mistakes. We just have happy accidents. If I'm honest with myself, what I wanted was instant gratification. After all, I had been an award-winning graphic designer, so I'm thinking to myself, how hard could this be, right? Well, it turned out to be a whole lot harder than I expected. Taking stock of my skills, or rather the huge lack thereof, I needed to humble myself and face the fact that I was like my little five-year-old self on top of that hill, on top of that rusty blue bicycle. I didn't have a clue at that time as to what I was doing. And perhaps that was my biggest breakthrough, recognizing where I was and learning the craft of painting. I also recognized that I needed to turn to better sources for learning how to paint. I needed to have a critical eye so that I could measure myself. And I think I had that. Uh, I, I knew what I wanted to produce. I just didn't know how to get there. So going through that process of creating those first paintings, I recognized a big lack in my own knowledge and what I needed to do to learn how to paint. So uh, it reminds me of something that uh, a photographer, uh, Rick Salmon, said in a class that I attended many, many years ago, and I'm probably paraphrasing this rather poorly, but he said there was four levels of learning. The first is you're incompetent and you don't know it. Two, you're incompetent, but you know it. <laughs> Three, you are competent and you don't know it. And four, you are confident and you know it, but you don't brag about it. You just have a measure of confidence. All the pieces have come together. Just like when I was that little boy and I practiced, 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 and I finally knew how to ride a bicycle without having to think about balancing and steering and braking and all those things and making it go. It, it would just come naturally. And that's the way it is with painting. If we keep applying ourselves and practicing, eventually all of those basic skills will come together as muscle memory and we'll be able to really focus in on the creative act. So that's what I'm working on. What about you? Where are you in the stream of learning? So let's get back to that 500 piece puzzle. When you dump that puzzle out on the table, what do you do? How do you tackle putting it together? Well, if you're like me, you look for pieces that are similar. You probably try to locate the edge pieces, uh, pieces that are similar in color, uh, similar in texture, and you get them organized. That helps you start. And then when you actually start to put it together, you might also begin with edge pieces and, because they're, they're easy. It's easy to, to find those, and that forms a framework for all the other pieces to start to fall into place. But it's not a process you're wanting to rush because you, you delight in studying the pieces, trying to find it, and then when you find one, there's a great deal of joy in finding that one piece that fits together. So you're not rushing the process. You want it. You want to enjoy the process of putting that puzzle together. And that's the way it is with painting. Enjoy the process. It's okay not to be good at first. Get organized. Group all the different skills that you need to learn and practice each one of those. Uh, learn to draw. You know, doodle. Sometimes I just doodle. Sketch in your sketchbook. Sketch from life. Uh, and keep at it. Work at perspective. Learn how to design a painting. You know, one of the good ways of doing that is uh, studying the masters and then uh, studying how they compose things and, and, and also their use of perspective. Learn to mix colors. Remember when you were in, in grade school and you did, did finger painting? You just, you're just messing around with paint. Well, do that with colors. Put them down on the palette. Learn how they work. Just start mixing. You don't have to create a masterpiece to do that. Create a color chart. Play with it. Get to know your materials. Those are pieces that are starting to interlock as you do that. And of course, there's so many great resources to learn about painting. There are many good books. There's videos. There's podcasts, magazine articles, blog posts, and of course, all the great museums throughout the world. 
that's one of the best ways, in my opinion, to learn is to look at the paintings, observe them directly in real life. Of course, uh, when you put a puzzle together, you don't stop with that one puzzle, do you? You go on to the next one, to the next challenge. That's part of the fun, right? And that's the way it is with painting. We're always learning something new. Embrace the process. Embrace always learning and enjoy painting. And that may be the true joy of painting is when you share it with other people. And I really believe that's the true joy. Well, let's make some nice little clouds that just float around and just have fun all day. Let's get crazy. What the heck? I'm gonna take a two-inch brush. This is your bravery test. Anything that you try and you don't succeed, if you learn from it, it's not a failure. You have to have dark in order to show light. It's just like in life. You know me. I think you're to be a big old tree. Thanks. Yes. 